started to start pursuing styling in 2015, I had no connections, no portfolio, no clients. And cut to now in 2020 as of this taping, I had celebrity clients under my belt. doing wardrobe for major companies like MTV, Spot, The CW. I've also had the chance to work on some dope music videos, commercials, advertisements, you name it. So I think I know a thing or two about how to break into the industry as a stylist. So if this sounds like your dream career, keep watching. by doing test shoots to show off your styling skills. Not only do test shoots let you show off your amazing style, but these shoots are going to help you book paid jobs down the line. So start testing like yesterday. I mean, even if you're assisting or interning for another stylist, that's even more so a reason for you to do test shoots. Do them on the weekend. When I was assisting another stylist, I did my own shoots on the weekend because I knew I couldn't include her work in my portfolio. You can't include assistant or much less intern work in your portfolio, so you have to have your own stuff. Start linking up with photographers in your city and start building your portfolio. Even if you don't live in a big city like LA or New York, I guarantee you can find other creatives in your city looking to build their portfolios as well. You just gotta find your tribe who are looking to get to work. Sessions are typically free. Their sole purpose is to build your portfolio. So don't expect a big paycheck, especially when you're first starting out. But it all pays off in the end. It's incredibly beneficial to you because not only are you getting new portfolio content, but you're meeting new people, thus building your network. Remember what they say, your network is your net worth. Next thing you want to do is learn the lingo. Start speaking the language of stylists. Words like pull, test, book, kiss mean something completely different to stylists than it does to the outside world. So start studying those key words so when you get to set, you're not confused by what everyone else is talking about. Now this next one, I hate to be the bubble burster, and you've heard this one before, but everyone tries to skip this step. Interning is key. You can read all the books, all the interviews, and watch all the videos about styling, but nothing compares to actually getting out there and doing the job. And you're going to get that first experience by interning under a stylist who's already done it. And you're really going to get that much needed experience in the beginning by interning under an established stylist. That's really how you're going to learn. Interning is where you learn those things that stylists who jump in with no previous experience under their belt have questions about, like where to find clothes for shoots, what showrooms to go to. Showrooms are not public places, so you're not going to find them on Google. You find them by interning and doing that grudge work that we all hate. No one likes to do returns, not even me. So, and if you say you do, you lying. So, when I was interning, I used to be super shy, super quiet. I know it's hard to believe now, but I would just go in there and return the clothes, put the garment bags down, and just walk out. But I actually worked with another stylist who encouraged me to start building my network, start introducing myself to the people at the showroom, because those are the people who I'm going to start pulling from when I went out on my own. So I was grateful to have a stylist like that in my corner who actually encouraged me to start building my connection. So now I'm encouraging you, next time you go do returns, introduce yourself and get to know the people by their name. And start building a genuine relationship with the publicists in these showrooms. Showrooms are your best friend as a stylist. That's where you get clothes for free. And as long as you maintain a positive relationship with them, they'll always come through for you. So let me share a quick story with you. I had a client who was filming in Atlanta. She's an actress. She came back to LA. She called me around 11 a.m. noonish and told me that she had an event at 5 p.m. And I was like, it was a gala, so she needed something really nice and formal. So I couldn't just run to the mall and just grab something real quick. So what I did was I hit up my showroom connects and I said, hey, my client, she just got back in town and she has a last minute event. Can I come in? They came through for me and they said, sure, come on in. No appointment needed. Now, of course, I'm not going to abuse this relationship and just keep doing that every single time. But in times of emergency, having those relationships is everything. So that starts from the beginning when you're assisting, when you're interning with someone. If I didn't have a 
strong established relationship with this soul they would have been like girl boo figure it out but because i built a real relationship with them they know me it might sound like the long route but which would you rather do spend years trying to figure it out on your own through trial and error and making no real progress or would you rather spend your time learning under someone who's been there done that and is going to teach you exactly what you need to know now i know what some of you might be thinking you might be thinking well i interned for a stylist and whenever i would ask questions they would get upset or they would have attitude i've been there too i've been through it i've even interned for stylists that made me question whether or not i even wanted to be in fashion but what i have to say about that is they're miserable and that has nothing to do with you you will find the stylist who's going to actually take you under their wing there's a million and one stylists out here so if you're interning with someone especially for more than three months and you haven't learned anything besides the shortest pickup route to their favorite showroom then it's time to go internships are a two-way street so the stylists that you're working under they're getting your help in exchange you are receiving experience and knowledge and that's how it needs to go so start reaching out to stylists in your city and tell them how much you want to gain experience and how much you want to help them reach the next level in their career don't email them saying hey i'm a stylist how can you help me no your job is to help them so reach out to them and tell them that you want to learn that's how you're going to get a response next step is building your stylist toolkit Every profession has that certain set of tools that help make that job easier, and styling is no different. Our kits are everything. Pasties, double-sided tape to avoid any wardrobe malfunctions. The best double-sided tape in my experience have been Topstick and Hollywood Fashion Secret Fashion Tape. Whatever you do, please do not go to Michael's and get that yellow double-sided scotch tape. It is not going to work. It is not meant for skin. Invest in the real stuff. So those are just the basics. I can do a whole video on what to have in your stylist kit. If that's something you'd want, go ahead and leave a comment below. Last but not least, you want to start thinking about finding your niche. When most people think about styling, they automatically think celebrity styling. You know, the glitz and the glamour, the red carpet, the magazine covers. But that's just one of several different paths you can take your styling career. Their stylists put in that work behind the scenes at corporations like Netta Porte, Farfetch, to fast fashion companies like Forever 21 and Fashion Nova, to TV shows, personal styling, menswear styling, to even Paris Fashion Week. Stylists style those runway shows. So I always tell new stylists, try everything. You're never going to know what you actually like until you do it. You might have this idea in your head of what styling for TV is like, but when you actually do it, you might find that you don't like those 12, 14 hour days. And when I say 12 and 14 hour days, those are at the minimum. TV is no joke. You might like the structure more so of the nine to five life in e-commerce styling. So with all of these possible paths you can take your journey on, the next question is which type of stylist do you want to be? Now you don't have to make up your mind right this second, but this is just to get the wheels turning in your head. The industry is yours for the taking, so you just have to take that first step. So what type of stylist do you want to be? I want to hear from you. Drop it in the comments below.